So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Artem and I am a software engineer at DataArt. Uh, so, a few words about me. Uh, so, I, I like mathematics and that is why I like uh, the game's development because actually there is uh, tons of math in it. And uh, I also have passion about growing vegetables, but actually today we're going to talk not about the vegetables, but about the uh, web games development. Uh, so uh, in web there are both 3D games and 2D games, and 2D games mostly uh, defined as HTML5 games. It's kind of buzzword, uh, you can hear it uh, almost everywhere, but uh, HTML5, it's not about actually, it's not about the game, it's just because a canvas element is there in the DOM specification and it allows to get the context for uh, both WebGL and Canvas 2D, so that's why it's called HTML5 games. And there is a pretty good, I think, old joke about IE and how can you detect that your content, your markup is HTML5. You can just run it try it in Internet Explorer, and if it doesn't work, it's most probably HTML5. Um, but uh, it's actually just your preference, 3D <laughs> game or 2D. So, because 3D is kind of a little bit more interesting for the game developers, we're going to talk about it for today. So, um, the world of web games development, it's, it's actually very big. It's uh, comparably much smaller than the whole game industry, uh, like regular game industry, not ga not web, but uh, because the web is actually a free platform for both for the users and <coughs> for the developers, it actually rapidly grows, and uh, every year the new standards are coming, and uh, in they introduce some new features, new performance improvements, and sometimes they introduce some new issues of. Uh, actually but still it's making uh, it's making it's more attractive for the uh, developers so I mean the web platform uh, so the new standards what I mean the standards uh, I mean solutions that do not require any third-party plugins like flash or Netscape uh, API uh, they just run in many modern browser maybe accept except IE and uh, they have a community and improving continuously. Uh, you may already hear it, and today have heard about the Unity game engine. It's actually a pretty good uh, uh, engine that allows you to write cross-platform uh, games and just run it on any platform, for example, uh, on Linux, on Mac, uh, on Android. Actually, you can target the build for Android, and it, it utilizes the OpenGL for Linux uh, <coughs> OS. It utilizes uh, direct uh, DirectX <coughs> for Windows operating systems and uh, uh, and um, uh, Windows consoles, Xbox consoles. So, <coughs> and there is a possibility to run the Unity game engine also in a browser with this uh, special plugin. Uh, Unity Web Player. So it's actually one of the most popular, maybe NP API plugins in in the for the, for the browser. So it just runs your 3D game into very in the with a very efficient performance. And uh, but there are some some issues because uh, recently mostly all the major vendors uh, started to drop in support for NP API plugins because of some security issues, because of some old architecture that were used to, to design that NP API in the late 90s. And uh, for example, Chrome, uh, this, the latest some sta stable builds, they don't support NP API anymore. That means that you cannot run a Unity web game anymore using Unity web player. And actually, Unity 5.4 that was released not so long ago uh, is no longer shipped with Unity web support, web player support. Um, but of course, uh, because they are dropping uh, support for web players, there are some alternatives. So for the browser, uh, Unity web player comes with a solution called WebGL export. So what is WebGL? As you may already hear, it, WebGL stands for Web Graphics Library. Um, and the first specification of what was introduced in uh, back in 2011, I think in, in March, 
And uh, this is a JavaScript API for rendering interactive 3D and 2D graphics. Uh, and, and it just doesn't require any, any plugin. It just runs in any uh, modern browser that supports it. Uh, so actually, WebGL does so by introducing some uh, API uh, that is based on OpenGL for embedding systems uh, 2.0. And uh, it can be run using this HTML5 canvas element. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, like some simple example uh, of WebGL and how it looks in the browser. Okay, so it's called Car Visualizer, and it's pretty much maybe old example, but still it shows you some basic. Uh, understanding how it looks and it's just JavaScript just look like how awesome is is this uh, it runs without any plugins it's just pure WebGL and pure JavaScript and there are some nice techniques like shadow maps you can see here some reflection techniques um, so we can just it's pretty interactive you can just switch to another model and pick another color and just enjoy and don't you don't have to install any any web player uh, like any plugin. Oh right, so let's close it. Um, uh, but of course there are some issues with web. Where is my mouse? Okay, uh, because a JavaScript it wasn't designed to be so performant and used for as a, a, as a game engine initially. It was designed just to make some DOM manipulations to make your page interactive, and uh, there are some 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 limitations. For example, JavaScript is not doesn't support multi-threading, so you cannot leverage this in 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 the browser. For example, if you used some threads uh, for performance optimizations in your Unity game, it's not possible here. Maybe just maybe. You can can do some tricks using some web workers, but it doesn't uh, been it cannot be compiled easily and just transferred to web platform without some manual optimizations. And uh, also, um, uh, there are some some techniques and just don't don't uh, are not supported in WebGL because it's it was based on quite old. Uh, standard open of OpenGL GL 2.0, and for example, doesn't it doesn't have support? It ha hasn't support for uh, real-time global illumination. It just uh, supports um, some pre-baked or pre-computed global illumination for some static objects when you just calculate uh, the uh, reflections of light from some surfaces at the compile time before the play actually starts. And uh, this is all can be uh, can, can be achieved on. Uh, Unity in some kind of real-time uh, global illumination techniques when you calculate the reflections uh, of the lights uh, in real time, for example, for every second frame or third frame. Uh, but this doesn't support it in, in WebGL. And also there is no support for directional light maps and so on. But there are some good news. Uh, there is uh, the new st standard is coming and it's called WebGL2. Uh, it's not yet released. But when it is, uh, you can just compile your Unity game to the WebGL, and the WebGL is uh, backwards compatible with WebGL first, so your previous games will just run. And the good news is that WebGL is uh, based on OpenGL 3.0, so it introduces some new features to your shaders and uh, some new performance improvements. But still, uh, like uh, WebGL itself is pretty fast because it runs some programs called shaders on your GPU, and the GPU can parallelize all that work, and it's pretty fast. But still, JavaScript is a bottleneck. So let's try to understand like how can we do the JavaScript fast for our web games. Um, so uh, actually, there is a special subset of JavaScript called ASM.js. Uh, so Unity WebGL uh, exports. It uses uh, mscript and compiler toolchain to uh, transpile C and C++ runtime code uh, of Unity uh, to actual JavaScript. And uh, so, as I've already already told you, SMJS is just a subset. It's it's not a new language. It's it's a subset of JavaScript that has some lots of restrictions. And 
uh, if browser just doesn't support ASMGS, it falls back to uh, just regular interpreter and just uh, just in time compilation. But uh, if browser detects this uh, piece of code that is ASM, it can be uh, compiled to a very predictable performance, and uh, it's just about one and a half times slower than some native C compiled code. Uh, so uh, let's take a look take a look at some basic model ASMGS model. So it looks like a regular JavaScript function. The only difference is this use ASM statement. It's actually maybe very similar to use strict statements you all uh, all of you may be familiar with. And uh, it has a return statement where it returns all the kind of, it's a kind of analog of exporting of your module. So this square function can, can be used in any outside JavaScript uh, functions that are not ASM code. And uh, when, when it gets executed, this, this part of uh, this function square, it gets executed much more uh, faster with way more faster performance because in, in the function square, the x is uh, strictly typed. And here it's just 32 bits integer. And uh, the validation validator of ASM can, can detect this and compile this to a very efficient uh, assembly. Um, so why it's so fast? Like, because um, let's, let's, let's take a look at our, our function square. Uh, if so, if the browser is able to compile uh, the ASM function square, it's uh, in in in, the, in its uh, code sample, it translates just to two machine instructions. Just take the um, <coughs> value and put it in our temporary register in the processor and do some simple operations called multiplication here. But when uh, JavaScript doesn't uh, when when it, when it doesn't understand this ASMGS uh, syntax, it just does over 10 machine instructions. Uh, for example, it just need to do type checking. If it doesn't, uh, it doesn't expect it type. It just need to convert it, and that if it's a tagged, tagged value, it need to extract it, do some uh, do some calculations, and then uh, convert back. So it's lots of machine instructions. That's that's why it's pretty uh, not so fast like like ASMGS. So there is a good example of uh, ASMGS performance. It's called ASMGS Chess Battle. So it was built by Microsoft. Um, there are two identical chess engines, and they, uh, pre um, the source code is pretty much the same. The only difference, one of them uses this USM statement. And to, to uh, make a hint for a browser that that, pa that part of code is probably can be compiled with uh, no uh, runtime type checking without garbage collection. Uh, so let's take a look at that example. So each turn uh, for each engine, each engine is limited for 20 milliseconds for each turn to make calculations. Let's start to march. And here you can see ASMGS uh, predicts its win chance. And here it's not optimized, it just fallbacks to regular JavaScript. So uh, I bet ASMGS is almost almost done. More often it, it, it wins like faster. Okay, so one hundred percent it's gonna win. And now I also, yeah, yeah I agree. That's total one. Okay, so that was just an example. Like ASMGS does lots more calculations per like some per second, for example. And that is why it can like do much more stuff. Um, OK, let's move on. So it's just a head of time compilation. What it does, it unboxes the representation of integers and floating point numbers. It doesn't have runtime type checks, and it doesn't have garbage management. And it also has a very efficient heap to store in memory variables. So let's just take a look how it looks and compare the C code and JavaScript code that is get compiled using mscripten. So in C code, you can see just regular uh, function that is takes an argument integer and returns, just increments it and returns. In JavaScript, it looks like pretty much the same, just a function. But here you can see the hints uh, for our 
uh, analyzers that in uh, that e variable it's uh, has some strict type in this case we need to convert it to integer using this bitwise operator with zero uh, because uh, numbers in JavaScript basically are 64 float floats so and here we, we explicitly tell that e is integer and we return integer um, so JavaScript engine has a guarantee that uh, there are no speed bumps and variable types won't change and that so it can generate simpler and more efficient code uh, I just want to show you an example like how it works in re in reality um, and one of the earliest efforts to uh, leverage the advantages of WebGL and ASMGS were uh, made by Mozilla and Epic Games back in 2013 when they ported their Unreal Engine uh, 3 to the web platform so just a pure JavaScript it's called Epic Citadel and uh, you can see how awesome this graphics it's just tons of C++ code was compiled to ASMGS and it runs in Firefox, some nightly build, I believe. And the performance looks like native application and no plugins. So just take a look how awesome that example. All right, <laughs> I think we can we can go on. The water, everything can be achieved like with WebGL, the same like on desktop, but in, in your browser. Okay, but still, ASMGS looks like a hack because still it's JavaScript and it's still it's not so performant as native code. Um, so that is why. The web is going forward, and there is a new um, uh, kind of experimental, efficient, low-level programming language for in-browser client-side scripting. It's called WebAssembly. So it's kind of an improvement to JavaScript, uh, but it doesn't uh, replace JavaScript. It's just a complement to JavaScript, and it has two main benefits. Uh, so uh, the format that is used for WebAssembly can be decoded much faster than JavaScript uh, can be parsed. That is very important for mobile devices because on, on mobiles uh, large compiled codes can take easily about 20 or 40 seconds uh, to parse and it's very critical to mobile devices and also uh, the second advantage is because of the new syntax that the new language has it, it doesn't have rest restrictions to be compatible with JavaScript as a subset, so it's just more easy to add new features uh, that improves performance. And also, uh, this uh, binary code it's actually represented is in abstract syntax tree, and it's actually debu debuggable, so you can debug your uh, like builds. Um, but still, WebAssembly in it's not in production yet; it's in development mode right now. Some browsers do support it in some nightly builds, uh, like for example, Chrome uh, Canary supports it. And Unity, uh, Unity game engine, Unity Web Export already has support for it. Uh, so you just, when it comes, you just need to target the build, the export to not ASMGS but WebAssembly. And also, we can just take a look how it runs in your browser. There is one more demo uh, called Angry Bots demo. As you can see in Chrome, it just doesn't support. And it tells me that I can use all either Chrome Canary or Firefox Nightly. But the good news, it has uh, ASMGS fallback. So this uh, new technology, but new standard, just can be polyfilled with some older standards with ASMGS and still run like pretty fast. So you can see. Okay, I don't have control of my movements. I can show you. It's pretty much simple example, but it shows that it 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 may run in your browser with a fallback to your sound.js. Um, all right, and now it's time to take uh, to dive into some code <laughs> and to create some simple stuff uh, with low level API and look like how WebGL uh, works actually on a low level. 
under the hood. So uh, what is a graphics pipeline? It's uh, w what actually is going on behind the scenes is just you supply a set of 3D coordin coordinates and they are gets transformed to color to the pixels of your screen. So there are special uh, programs that run on GPU and they are called shaders and uh, in WebGL there are two kinds of shaders it's vertex shader and fragment shader uh, they all they are all def they all uh, defined in a special C like language called GLSL it's a high level language uh, so let's uh, briefly take a look like how it's how it works so there is a vertex shader um, all it does it, it just uh, takes uh, p the position of every vertex of your data and can move it in, in your 3D uh, game world and it runs for every vertex that you pass to your program and uh, you need to, to, to set the GL position in it in your main function. So the next uh, shader is a fragment shader uh, so it's all about calculating the color of your pixels so here we are just setting for our simple example the uh, color with this WAC4 uh, so it's RGB and uh, alpha channel of our, it's a, I think it's a green color. Uh, yeah, so usually in game engines, uh, GL cell shaders are strings are built dynamically at runtime and uh, with the help of some predefined templates. Um, but for our simplest example, we'll just use non GS script tags to, to write our shader and using the DOM API will get the contents of this element as a string and pass it to our shader program. So we need to create a WebGL rendering context uh, using this HTML5 canvas element and actually get the context uh, from canvas passing this WebGL string and GL is actually our entry point to all the WebGL API. So then we need to create shader and actually compile shader so we're creating this helper function uh, just gl api functions create shader pass in the source compile and uh, check for compile status if something goes wrong we just throw an exception with info info log and so here we let's do and compile our shaders passing it's the source from our non-strict script tags vertex and fragment shaders gets compiled then we need to link sh shaders into a program that we're gonna upload to our GPU so um, okay we use again API creating a program attaching the vertex shader fragment shader and link them into a program then then we just check for link status if there are some errors we throw an exception uh, otherwise we return our created program uh, so we did create a program and now what we uh, what we should do is to supply data to our program so actually the majority of all the WebGL API is about setting up the state and to supply data to our GLSL programs uh, so uh, in our case uh, the data is uh, set where the vertex position attribute it's our input variable in our vertex shader and uh, we need to look up position of it at attribute and bind our buffer. So uh, actually created a buffer and bound to array buffer. And you can reason about WebGL as a global state machine. So when the buffer is bound, all we do with that buffer when create when writing to it, it goes everything is goes in into bound buffer before it's so an array buffer in this case. Uh, so we are creating our data. In this case, it's just two D points X and Y for our simple triangle. Uh, as you may also uh, see here that uh, the coordinates in a clip space. So everything uh, that is should be go to WebGL uh, should be in this uh, range of minus one to one space. Everything that is beyond that uh, that, sp uh, that space gonna be clipped. So we will, will not see it on the screen. So we buffer our data to our program. And uh, the only thing that you also have uh, that should be mentioned, it's uh, we need to explicitly convert our uh, uh, types to float 32 because WebGL understands and works with float 32 values and doesn't work with uh, float 64 that is default in JavaScript. 
And the third argument is just static draw that is kind of hint to our um, uh, GPU that uh, data will not change too often or will not change at all. So it will place it in a memory where it's, it's not so efficient to write to. And there are two more constants we can pass. It's a dynamic draw or a stream draw. And it will put in some memory that is very efficient to write to. So it's just a hint if we, if we need to pass data that will not change very often. Uh, OK, need to prepare the render. So we're setting up our viewport, passing its uh, width and height of our canvas, clearing the canvas, and tell that we're going to use our previously compiled program. The last thing we need to do is to take data from our buf buffer. So we need to, to, to tell, uh, actually, uh, the WebGL how to read from our buffer. So f we, we're gonna read. We're gonna read from the buffer I into our attribute that we previously got. So, so uh, look up the location of which, uh, then we bind to a buffer and we tell that in our buffer we have size of two items per iteration is actually x and y. Uh, the type of da data is gel float, and we don't need to normalize the data because it is already normalized in Eclipse space from minus one to, to one. Um, so the stride and offset for our simple example is stays zero because we have compact, uh, already packed data in our array, and we're starting from the very beginning. All right, seems like it's pretty much a lot of boilerplate for just a simple triangle in WebGL, but uh, actually, in, in, in like in real world, you don't do uh, this boiler boilerplate like manually. There are a lot of good. Uh, uh, libraries, there are a lot of good uh, game engines that uh, operate on a high level and only if you need to do something on a low level, for example, some cust customizations and some uh, really complex stuff, so you're writing some shader or maybe modifying the shaders and so on. Uh, so the last thing we need to do is just render. So we are supplying uh, three parameters to, to draw a race API function. It's uh, The mode is JL triangles, it means that we uh, draw a triangle for each group of three vertices. So we're starting from the very beginning and we actually pass three points to draw arrays. And here we'll see the real example. <laughs> it's just a triangle, cool. We build it. So here we can see it's a canvas element that is our vertex shader. That's our fragment shader, and that is our program, and it all runs all runs in browser. Okay, that's not good that I closed the browser. Okay, so there are also some popular WebGL game engines that I I, I think that you you should have try playing with it. With it, it's Play Canvas, 3GS, Babylon JS, and uh, I would like also to show you a simple example, or not simple example, to an example of one more other game that I think is pretty cool. Uh, it's called Quake JS. Yep, cool. So it's also uh, was ported from OpenGL to WebGL and to ASMGS, and it runs in browser without any plugins. So you can take a look. It's it's a shooter, real time actually, 3D game. Okay, I have connection. That's great. So it looks like very good game. Let's try to play it. Okay, cool. This is actually very similar to the experience of all the modern 3D games, 3D shooters, and it just runs in a browser. I think there are no active players except me in this game right now. So it's good for me because I will not be shot. All right. Um, how can I get my mouse? What?
Bring my mouse back. Really? <laughs> okay, great. Finally. So that's basically it. If you have any questions, go ahead. I, I would love to ask uh, about this ASMGS, uh, which is probably could be used for uh, any GS, um, I don't know, yep. pe performance updates for your website, not, not even for games, so uh, because just browser know about that. Is it used? It may be used. So as, as I, I, I can go back to that slide and show you more details, if you like. Um, it's actually, it's, it can be used, but it's, it's maybe not worth to use if you, if, because it doesn't have access to the DOM. It does, it's just different. It's mostly about some calculations and it has a, three input input uh, arguments in this module. It's a standard lib. It's mostly about some uh, standard JavaScript uh, API like mass. Um, and it has a foreign argument to get access to some third party uh, JavaScript, like regular JavaScript. And uh, yeah, you, you can write something like that requires really performant uh, optimizations here in, in, in your SM model and call and just export it using this return statement and it will just call it from outside uh, JavaScript and it will be executed much way more faster if a browser like can compile uh, it into assembly. So it's just no problem. But there is no DOM, DOM API in it. Okay. Any Thank more you. questions? Anyone? No, no questions here. Lucky Alex, uh, he has lots more questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you.